hi, you guys. Thank you so much for coming tonight and coming all the way out here to Malibu. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I'm Kim Sill, and I'm speaking on behalf of Chris DeRose tonight from Last Chance for Animals. He cannot be here with us because he had a, a double knee surgery and he's still recovering, but um, he's here with us in spirit. And believe me, I am not as charismatic or handsome as he is, so I'm going to do my best. So just bear with me. Um, okay. Tonight we're here to remember those 80 dogs that were shot in Pennsylvania by their owner when he was told by the county to treat them for fleas and flies. In Pennsylvania, it's legal to shoot your property if you don't want to spend money on a vet. There are two pet shops here in Malibu that sell dogs that come from puppy mills in Pennsylvania. Pet Headquarters and Millionaire Mutts. Both these stores buy puppy mill dogs and wave the USDA banner and say that it's okay because it's legal. However, both these stores will lie to you when you ask them if they come from a puppy mill. We vow tonight in Malibu to never forget what that puppy miller did to those 80 dogs in Pennsylvania. We will remember those 80 dogs by not giving up hope that we can change the world. We vow to honor those four-legged souls by fighting with our voices and our resources. Most of the dogs killed were puppies. None of the dogs had ever walked on a leash. They had no names. They had no collars. They'd never jumped on a person's lap. They'd never jumped on the sofa or in a pool of water. They never even took a trip to a park to chase a ball. They never felt the loving touch of a human. I promise you that Last Chance for Animals will never forget those dogs. LCA will protest here until the laws are changed. We will not back down to threats and intimidation from these stores. Tonight we vow to change the way our best friends are treated in Malibu and across this country. We vow to fight for the ones in Pennsylvania and Oklahoma and Missouri and Arkansas and Arizona and South Dakota and California. We will fight for the ones that live their entire life in that cage, breeding litter after litter, so that then they could be legally shot by the hands of their owners. Tomorrow morning, the sun will rise over a new day here in Malibu, and we will no longer be standing here with these candles and these paw printed ribbons. But we will be standing here with signs that say, Adopt, don't shop. And I beg you, Please, make a promise to yourself and to the 80 souls watching us now. Make a simple promise to do one thing, to fight for those dogs. I want to introduce you to Pam and Robert, who have been protesting here for the past eight weeks, and they both have something to say, and they're very important in this movement, and I really thank them. This is Pam Van Ireland. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm probably going to be saying a couple of things that Kim just said, but it, I don't think we could get it, we could say it enough because it's so important why we are here today. And it's because a man by the name of Elmer Zimmerman and his brother Ammon from the township of Moxa County in Pennsylvania, they shot and killed 80 defenseless dogs. They were served a citation to get the dogs checked by a vet. They decided they didn't want to have to go to the trouble. I think they did a big F you to the government, the local government, and shot them instead. And then they threw the bodies on a compost heap on the property and left them there. I don't know if you knew that, but it's, um, it's disgusting. But the most horrific part of all is it was all done legally. Um, we come here today to mourn these poor animals that died so violently and without any love. We want people to know that it's not okay to shoot innocent dogs just because they become inconvenient or they're not making enough money or not producing enough puppies. There are groups out there working on legislation to mandate that only licensed veterinarians can euthanize commercial breeding kennels, but until that time, it's our job to be the voice that speaks out against this legal yet barbaric practice. There are those who want to focus on what we're against, but I, as a mother living here in Malibu, I want to focus on the message that we're sending to our children. It's way past time to tell the truth to our kids because puppy mills supply 99% of the dogs to these pet stores, Millionaire Mutts and pet, pet headquarters and all these pet stores across the United States. And my message as a mother and my mission as an animal lover is to get the truth out and let the children make an informed choice so this horrific chain of, of things will not continue anymore. 
we have to give them, they have to make informed decisions because our silence only keeps the public ignorant of the torture and animals will continue to die and suffer. My father recently passed away, but one of the biggest messages he happened to have instilled in me was we have to, as a society, protect the weakest among us, and I think that's what we're all trying to do here. So thank you for being here, and thank you for caring, and let's all, it starts, the flame starts with a flicker, and we are the flicker, and I think if we are here every weekend, we are going to make a difference, and things are going to change, but it's got to start with people like us. This is Robert. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm Robert sorry. Robert Cabral of Bound <laughs> yeah. Angels has been protesting with Last Chance for Animals for the past eight weeks diligently. He's been our manpower as the police <laughs> and as the realtors and as a lot of people out here haven't given us the thumbs up of support. Um, he's been here to help us. Um, I'm an animal lover first and um, I'm a very big supporter of what Kim and Pam are doing here. These, these girls are my heroes. Um, Chris is an amazing human being. What he's done is, is just incredible. And we should all look to these people as our true heroes. We're standing up for those who can't stand up for themselves. I'm angry as hell. I'm really pissed off at what's going on. Puppies are sold in pet stores. They come from puppy mills. And puppy mills breed misery for thousands and thousands of suffering animals that do not deserve it. The puppy that stares at you in this beautiful store from behind this glass window standing on a steel grate is a derivative of an animal that has suffered its entire life. It has never been loved. It has never been touched. It has never gotten the affection that your dog at home gets. The important thing is that this is a sad example that this tragedy breeds greed. If you really love dogs, if you love your dog, if you've ever loved an animal, you'll make a responsible choice and you will help them. You can do this by sending a clear message that this is not right, that dogs deserve better. They deserve much, much better. You will stop and you will not allow them to be enslaved. Adopt and don't shop. If you love dogs, you will adopt one. If you make a decision to buy one from a breeder, I urge you to think twice. But if you do it, adopt a second one. Free one soul from the misery that goes on. There's over five million shelter animals killed in our shelter system in this humane country we call the United States of America every single year. Five million animals, that's enough to stretch from California to New York, a line of dead bodies. Put that in your mind five million bodies on a road from Los Angeles to New York. I hope that you will make a compassionate choice and save an animal. Thank you. And I'd just like to add to that because what Pam said about the children, I've been protesting for almost nine months at different pet shops around Los Angeles. And on Saturdays and Sundays, I see parents mm -hmm. running into these pet shops with their children and saying, oh, we're just going to pet the puppies. Well, I say to those parents, Please, give your children a choice. Give them the truth, give them a choice, and then see what they choose. I will bet that that child, given the truth and a choice, will take you to your local animal shelter. They do not need to be brought into these stores. That is the wrong message to be giving your children. Now, Chris Kelly would like to say something, and she has got a foundation called the Chris Kelly Foundation, and then we're going to talk to me. What I'd like to say about these puppies, this is the last form of slavery in the United States. These animals, these living things are being bought and sold. Uh, one law that I'd like to see demolished is animals as property. And that's exactly what they are. They're shipped here. I've gone undercover. I know what they do. I know what they pay for these dogs. They pay 50 to 250. They sell them up to eight to 3,000. They're shipped three days in a truck and they don't have food or water. These are truck drivers that are bringing them. When they arrive and they are dead, some are dead, some make it, you call the uh, mill and you just say, uh, two have died, but they ship another two. If one dies, they'll keep shipping. Uh, the markup for these dogs are incredible. Uh, sometimes you can get them for $25 if they're three or four months. And it's the puppies you see, it's not the parents. 
the they're churning them out they're breeding them so much they have heart murmurs they have giardia when they get there they've got behavioral problems uh, some ship on the airplanes they say that's better so from that they get the behavioral problems so I'd say I know it's a long shot with animals is not property but that's something baby steps we have to chip it away eventually they won't be property and we won't be able to do what we want to these animals. We won't right. be able to sell them for a profit and te treat them like they're a piece of merchandise. Right. Yeah, selling dogs in America should be a crime, especially since they're churned out by the puppy mills. Right. And it's legal. Yes. And that's how these stores get away with it. Right. Because it's property. Right. So do you guys want to give a moment to the, the doggies? And think about the doggies? Would anybody else? I want to say something. Yeah, she, yeah she's going to say something. Should I go now? Yeah. Yeah, well, I want to echo Robert in saying that Pam and Kim and Chris and Robert are truly heroes in our society. Gandhi said that a society can be judged by the way it treats its animals. And our society, we have such a front that we do treat them kindly, but there's a very, very ugly underbelly, and that's what you're exposing. Thank you so much for doing this. I had the honor and privilege last week to meet a puppy mill mother. She had lived in a cage for 10 years and she was no longer producing and she was rescued by the Atlanta Humane Society and I was hosting a trade show there and one of the trade show founders adopted this dog and I got to see her the day after she'd been released from her cage. And the thing about these dogs is that they are such sentient, intelligent, loving, forgiving creatures. Even though she had never seen the outside, had never had a human touch, as you all said, she was willing to accept all of this. She was willing to explore and to accept her new environment, and she just showed everyone love. She was such a lesson to all of us, just watching her. And I know we all feel this way. And I've written a poem here about the evolution of dogs. It's called Man's Best Friend. Man's best friend with us did grow from the wild we once did know. Created to protect and serve, what did man do to deserve such loyal and unconditional love, as if delivered perfectly from above? Special to fulfill our needs, to hunt, protect with many breeds, each specialized to fill a niche, but somewhere along the way, a hitch. The wild dogs bonded, helped us survive, evolve. So now here's the dilemma to solve. When wild, they survive fully equipped, but now domestic, their dependencies flipped, completely upon us to fill their needs, to shelter them, doctor them, and to feed. Without our help, they can't survive, can't find food, be healthy, or even stay alive. We've created man's best loyal friend, but great responsibility comes with this end. They give us unconditional love, and we are given dominion, which means to take care of. We have dog biscuits to give to all of you so that you can take them home to the dogs that you have, that you love, that you cherish. And just remember from what we did here tonight, it will not be forgotten. We will not forget those dogs. We will make a difference. And when you see us out here in Malibu, wave at us, give us the thumbs up, because you're going to see a lot of us. We are not leaving here until they go humane. Until they go humane.